So I believe we have four nations with their second city already down. That's Canada, the Sioux, Iceland, and Prussia. And I just think if we've learned anything about these campaigns, uh, the, the civs that get their second city down first are usually uh, going to be among the most powerful. Not necessarily they're going to win the game or anything, but they're going to be among the most powerful. Uh, so we should all kind of keep an eye. Not, I mean, it's not to say that some of these guys might get eliminated. They might, because again, like I talked about, early, early expansion uh, usually doesn't mean good things for other AIs in the area. But still, um, getting this second city down is, is a really good start. So we can keep an eye on most of these guys here. Uh, Canada up north, uh, the Sioux down south. I believe that's just about everybody. Um, yes. So let's look into the Prussian unique ability and unique uh, units. So like I said, Prussia is very military focused. So their military buildings possess unique general specialists that yield experience and increase the generation of great generals. Uh, high level melee and gun units earn golden age points from kills. We talked about how golden ages don't really help out that much for most of the AIs, but uh, still, it's, it's pretty interesting to see how many, it's going to be I don't know. I can't wait to see how many generals they 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 get out there because generals are really really powerful. Whether the AI uses them to actually fight off other nations or, or use them for offensive battles, uh, they even can be slapped down as a citadel, and, and the AI loves to grab them their, their their citadels. So they also have a unique unit that replaces the riflemen. Their uh, mobile light infantry, which are stronger when adjacent to other military units, uh, only Prussia can build them. Uh, so yeah, I mean. That, that, I mean, that, that's going to be a really good combination because on Immortal Difficulty, armies get huge. And, and more than likely, uh, if, if they make it this long, if Frederick, which is the leader of Prussia, makes it to that part where they get the rifleman technology, then yeah, I mean, they're probably going to have a bunch of extra bonuses when fighting. They also have another unique unit. That's how you know their military base when they have all unique units. Uh, it, it replaces cavalry as well. It is a... Uh, it's a mounted unit which harms adjacent enemies and ignores enemy zone of control. So enemy zone of control is that sort of uh, mechanic where if I was here next to this, fin this Finnish warrior, I wouldn't be able to move two tiles over this way because, you know, there's a zone of control uh, one tile outside of where he's located. So uh, these cavalry units apparently will be able to kind of go boop, boop, and boop. I mean, they can, they, they don't, they, they just ignore it. They ignore a zone of control completely. So that might be a really, really good thing for a map like this where the AI is going to have a huge massive, massive armies, and uh, they'll, they won't have to worry about zone of control. Uh, and, and like it says also, it, it harms adjacent enemies. I don't know exactly what that means, uh, but I'm excited to find out. I'm wondering if, if they take a shot, if if enemy adjacent units are also going to take like maybe 5 or 10 damage uh, equally or something like that. I mean, that would be pretty cool. So yeah, Prussia's got some good stuff, and, and that seems like, you know, the AI can... You know, that's something why... I think the Zulu do so well. Their MP warriors uh, are so powerful because, you know, the AI doesn't have to be super smart to use them. They attack, and, and naturally, the, those, those unique units that the Zulu control attack twice. So obviously, the AI is going to dominate because they don't have to be that smart. There's no strategy involved. Whereas, you know, the, the AI never uses Mongolia to, their best, to the best of their abilities as a human player can because we can attack and then move uh, with the Kashyyyks. And that's why, that that's what makes Genghis Khan so powerful. But although... You never know, because apparently with the smart AI, I was looking into this, uh, it, it, it actually allows for this. It allows for the AI to, to do this more often. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. So we have a first wonder being built, and this was by uh, the... The, I'm going to have a problem saying this name the entire damn time, and I'm going to crush my face and every single time with my fists. Uh, the uh, Inuit, Inuit, Inuit tribes. Um, I, I don't want to call them the Eskimos because that's not what they are. And that's that's just, I don't want to do that. So the Goths, the Goths have also got their first declaration of friendship with the Philippines. Very cool. So that is, uh, that's interesting because of the, uh, they're really close by. And I'm sure the Goths probably don't like both Bulgaria as well as Vietnam. Vietnam's getting out their own settlers soon too. Uh, and this is a Filipino great library that's been built. And actually, this was stolen away. We saw that the Pope, we, we saw from the spy that the Papal State was uh, building this great library. But uh, it's been stolen away by the Philippines. Wow, that's pretty cool. Now, we should probably take a moment out to look at the religion and all the pathions that are, that are being built. Because uh, these do hold a pretty significant part in the game. So how many do we have? Dang, we've already got eight. Um... And does it? Oh yeah, it does. So Molly, 
one of the nations here. I uh, have God of the Open Sky providing plus culture for pastors. Nothing too much. I mean, I'll look for the, some of the really impactful pathions. Faith when winning a battle four tiles of your city. That's a pretty good one because they'll be probably getting a lot of that. Uh, God King, I always like. Vietnam picked that up. Goddess of Protection. Who picked that one up? The Pope. Ooh, that's a good one because like we talked about, he's not really in a in the best location ever. Uh, culture from Plantations for Finland. Um, we have... Religious Idols, which provides one plus culture as well as, as well as one plus faith for each gold and silver. Scotland has gold or silver? We didn't even check the luxury resource or the resources. As you can see, I have a lot going on here. Uh, I, I went way ahead in technology. That way I can get myself one spy. Because I thought, you know, getting a spy down early in this campaign would be interesting. That's why we're also able to see antiquity sites. So yeah, they have, uh, well, they have one silver resource. No, they have two, maybe probably three, actually. They've got no gold, so that was pretty smart of them. Relatively pretty smart of them. Uh, and one thing I didn't mention in the first video is that this campaign is going to be f really fun because there, you know, because it's on a tiny map, there are less strategic resources. The game only really accounted for having four nations tops here, uh, but because we included eighteen, there's going to be less resources. Which means, I mean, one thing that I'm thinking about is when uranium comes around towards that later part of the game, there's only going to be a few nations that can build it, which will be. Um, I don't know. I just I just can't wait for the tension that starts to build up where maybe Australia has has the access to, you know, some sort of nuclear capabilities, but Molly here is doesn't. So, you know, will Molly still declare the war, uh, risking their cities of, of getting nuked? Because in a campaign like this, getting one of your cities nuked is really, really bad. Uh, because you don't have that many cities to help provide you with more production, culture, faith, everything. You know, science. Uh, so so getting nuked and losing half your population is really, really bad. So anyways, let's finish off the... Uh, the Pathion overview here. So the other one was uh, Stone Circles, plus two from Quarries from the, for the Hungarian Empire, and Sun God, uh, providing one plus food for banana, citrus, and wheat resources. Canada picked that up. All right, Canada. Uh, and how many do you have? And, okay, you have quite a few wheat, don't you? Oh, you've got a bunch of wheat. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah, so that's even more yield than we're thinking. You must be, you must be already generating five. Yeah, you are. Already, this is going to be a big city. A very, very big city. Well, Canada's off to a really, really good start. I, I And I also am hoping that uh, these guys are able to get over towards the snow because I really love their unique um, tile improvement. It looks really cool. Still, geez, the Goths picked up Desert Folklore. That's surprising that no one else picked that up before them. Well, I guess no one else were, was next to the uh, to the desert to make that a good enough choice. Yeah, I mean, I mean, barely the Goths are barely close to the desert, though. That's the whole thing. They barely have a chance. Uh, Molly getting down there, settler. I mean, they're, they're close. I mean, they they might they could pick up a few tiles here and a few tiles north, but uh, still, I mean, that's not that much faith that's going to be providing to them. Uh, we have Afghanistan settling another coastal city, maybe wrapping around Scotland here. Pretty interesting to watch that. Anybody else with their other city? Uh, we saw Canada. Pope's kind of trapped here. Oh, man, the relationship's going to be different. Whoa! Wow. The uh, Cham Empire grabbed this island out this way. So I'm wondering if someone's going to grab this this continent. Ooh, 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 yes, yes. Okay, so yeah, I, I talked about this. My, I'm going to be the most literate for just a, few, just a little bit. So we have Stephen. I believe he's from the uh, Hungarian Empire, I think. This is definitely Canada. I got I to gotta start remembering these names. I know that we have uh, Vietnam here. Maybe I should get a mod here to uh, to switch the leaders to the uh, to the nation's names. But no, I'm gonna get it down by the end of this campaign. I, I already kind of I already got the kind of locations down. Another Pathion, jeez. Uh, Precious entered the classical era. Who is this? And what and what did you grab? Afghanistan, and they grabbed religious settlements. Fifteen percent faster border growth. Well, that's gonna be good for them, cutting off a little bit of of Scotland's expansion. Yeah, they're going to be cutting off there. Oh, yep, there goes Vietnam's next spot. I'm very glad that I deleted the uh, the early units because look at this. There are some nations that aren't building units. And, and you know, Immortal Difficulty starts them off with, I think, way too big of an army. It's like uh, two archers, two warriors. That This might be deity, but I think it's like one archer, two warriors, a scout. It, it's something really ridiculous. Um, and as we can see, someone like Venice and a lot of the nations that grab that second city haven't focused in. Well, I guess Afghanistan has proven me wrong with that statement. But uh, a lot of the, like Canada, 
you know, the nations that focus in on, uh, on a settler and, and to grab that second spot haven't focused on an army because I don't think they have the time. So if someone were to declare war early here, even Prussia, I mean, Prussia's only got two workers. That's not good. I mean, I think the biggest military in the world has got to be from Bulgaria. Bulgaria already has some chariot archers up. They have some catapults, which are really, really nice, uh, especially for taking uh, cities early on in this game. It's only turn 53. That They must be pretty far ahead in science, too, um, which actually, yeah, they they were. Crumb here is doing a pretty good job. Um, and as you can see, I think that, oh, I think I should mention this, that I know that some of the, you know, really, really cool mods that are really popular, uh, I know they have animations and and, and they... Uh, some of them are screen. Most modded sieves are just screenshots, but I know that Australia. Most people know this Australian um, sieve to have like an actual realistic animation that's moving and stuff like that. I turn that off because I've heard of uh, I've heard problems having this many mods and uh, and also having the uh, the AIs move. Uh, so just to be careful, just to make things safe, uh, I I just I had the leader. Um, that leader cutscene or whatever it may be, just go to a screenshot. Just, just I've just heard too many horror experiences. I don't want anything to happen like that. Again, we're gonna see some weird shit, and, and, and I'm serious. We're gonna see some very, very weird stuff. You're gonna probably see some things that are very confusing. Maybe not yet. Um, and, and I'm, I'm talking about besides unique units. There's some things that are gonna go against many of the way you guys think of Civ Five because of these very weird unique abilities and unique uh, units. There's some strange ones out there. So if if you're confused by something, trust me, these mods make things weird. So uh, so it's gonna be that should be pretty funny. I I, I can't wait. Uh, so we have the Temple of Artemis already built up uh, by Canada. Well, good for Canada. Canada's off to a really good start with the Goths also allying with Afghanistan. So they're allied to both the Philippines and Afghanistan. I I imagine the Goths. I mean the Goths have a pretty good army. So I don't think you can declare war in Bulgaria. I think Bulgaria is going to go after uh, Vietnam here. But, I mean, that they're geared towards defense. They, I mean, they're going to need more units, though. Uh, the Sioux tribe is doing pretty good, too. Uh, yeah, they're doing pretty awesome. How much money are you making? Four gold per turn. I'm not going to check the info edX yet. It's still too early on in this campaign to really check it. But uh, I, I will at some point. Just, just not yet. I think that a little bit too early on. So there's going to be some pretty forward expansion. As we can see, oh, bam. Yep, you kind of messed up the Iceland's, uh, the Icelandic Empire there. Uh, that was a not a cool move. You're asking for war, Mr. Pope. There, you're asking for for war. Finland going for their settler. We also have a uh, Belgian settler moving down south. I I just want to see who's going to colonize these small little islands here. Molly grabbing around Sydney. Going around Australia. Australia's got their settler up. So yeah, a lot of these nations are going to get their second city down. I mean, my, my hopes were that we were going to have enough room for everyone to get at least two or three cities total, uh, at least. And then, you know, have to expand. Oh, you settled right in the desert, the exact location. You should probably not be settling. But I know that they don't have much of a navy to explore this land. I mean, more than likely. I mean, you got to remember that, that the AI, I haven't removed the fog of war from the AI. So uh, that's something that needs to be remembered. Philippines are probably going for this desert. Maybe. Can't wait to see the interaction between the Hungarian and the Gothic Empire. Uh, because they do share, like, an inland sea. So technically, they could work on uh, maybe building some, some naval forces and having an interesting battle here in the middle. That's why I also like this, uh, this battle. So yeah, the Australians are about to settle their second city. And I believe off the top of my head, it might be Melbourne, if I remember correctly, the second city for Australia. I have a little bit of experience playing with that Civ. Um... Yeah, quite a bit of experience. Prussia's already going for their third city. Oh, but you know what? You probably got locked down there. The AI isn't exploring the seas too much. Uh, so far, we only have one person that got out of the Pangaea map. Everyone else is... Yeah, I mean, if they explored the seas, there's lots of stuff out there. But again, you know, we, we got to remember that you know the AIs don't have the removal. They, they don't see everything like we do. Um, so what do we have? We have the, the Parthion building in Rome. Okay, seems appropriate. I would say so. Lots of our, uh, lots of antiqu antiquity sites, and pyramids. Dang, Canada's off to a good start. Canada's off to a real good start. Oh man, I love it. That's good. Um, but they need to get up a military. A lot of these nations need to get up to a, a military. 
I think that most, I don't think a big war is going to break out until about turn, about turn 100. If you've been following, following these AI only campaigns for a while now, you'll know that things start to really just deteriorate with in terms of like AI alliances and relationships around turn 100, especially on higher difficulties. Bulgaria is probably going to end it soon. Bulgaria is setting up for somebody, and it's got to be against Vietnam. And I'm fascinated to see how they're going to be able to maneuver around this. The Sioux are going for their third city. That would be the first nation with three cities, I think. I think it would be. Yeah, I don't think we have anyone else here. I know it's close. Prussia's close, but unless he gets out of here fast. Yep, Melbourne. There it is. And uh, Belgium settled pretty far away from Brussels. I don't know if they're going to be able to defend that, but we'll see. So, yeah, this is really cool, right? I mean, they, they have these... Uh, like I said, they have these puppeted city-states, and, and that provides them more tourism. I'm not sure exactly if they have the choice of annexing them. We'll look into that, but uh, they, this does, does provide them a lot of culture. There's a lot of nations, a lot of these modded civs are very cultured geared, which is fascinating. No one here is science geared, so that's what I was actually kind of hoping for, to, to have these, uh, these nations not science geared. That way, we stay away from a science victory and maybe... Put, just push back the game a little bit longer because as we know on on higher difficulties uh these campaigns end up end up usually going for the science leader uh, but i don't think so this way because no one i've checked all the unique abilities i think no one i don't think anyone has any sort of uh science bonuses pretty sure pretty sure they don't um, again, and if, if you're wondering, you know, where's your, you know, where's, I didn't even talk about how I chose these modded civs. I only chose civs that were, one, historical, um, and, and two, like, I didn't use the, like, the Soviet Union or the Kingdom of England or, you know, the Kingdom of, uh, of a nation that's already in Civ Five, the Kingdom of Austria. I wanted to get new nations out. I wanted to, you know, have... People that may be watching the AI, AI campaigns for a while now, maybe their country wasn't represented, I wanted to make sure that they were at least given the opportunity in this campaign. and Because I, I, I definitely wanted to make sure that, that that happened. Oh, they didn't settle in the desert. I thought they would, but they're right underneath uh, the Canadian capital. And we also have the Terracotta Army uh, built up by uh, Brussels and uh, Belgium. Canada and Afghanistan, Declaration of Friendship. So there's already one friendship from Canada. I need to remember to, to read these uh, diplomatic notifications. Again, like I said, what I'm probably going to do this campaign for is I want to see who's good. I want to see who is the best. Yep, the Sioux, the, Sioux nation, the Sioux Empire have gotten their third city down. That's the first. That's, that's this one nation that's, uh, that's, that's the first out of this world. I want to see who's the best. That way, when we, whenever we do go back to this AI-only world battle, or if we do like an AI-only region, which is certainly on my mind, uh, like an AI-only continent, except for, you know, we've already done a Europe one, uh, but maybe a separate continent, you know, including those guys in. Obviously, I don't think Civ 5 has enough to, you know, include like in some place like, like Africa or North America. Um, so this is a great way to see exactly what modded civs work. Okay, so Hungary's got their second city down. Pretty even so far. Very, very even. Again, I mean, most of these most of these nations have about another 31 turns before they need to worry. Uh, because some of the militaristic guys that are really building up their empires, it's, it's about to go down. It's very much about to go down. We also have the Statue of Zeus built by Iceland. Uh, first religion has been founded by actually Vietnam. It's, it's Buddhism. Holy city of Hanoi. Let's go ahead and check on the uh, bonuses that the uh, Buddhism religion is going to give to them. So extra happiness. They don't really need that from temples, but, you know, it's going to, uh, I guess, push for more faith in their empire, as well as plus two faith for each foreign city following this, this religion. That's very smart. That's very smart of them. Uh, and they already have God King, which is from their Pathion. They should probably go after... They're going to be generating a lot of faith, so they, should, they might want to think about maybe grabbing holy warriors. Uh, that would probably be a... Very, very good idea. Still no wars broken out yet, but I'm sure video 3 and 4 is always that magic number in these campaigns. Video 3 or 4 is when the, just everything goes down. It's insanity. Anyways, guys, wow, who the heck has already reformed it twice? How did you do that? You did it twice. How is that possible? Well, anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.